Great, thank you, James. That was all really interesting. Have we got um, Jeff on the line? Yeah, good morning, Richard. How are you? Morning, Jeff. I'm really well. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Good. Um, let's just put this in the full screen. There we go. Right. So, um, yeah, thanks for joining today. And, um, yes, obviously a, a really important um, stage in the market at the moment, um, property market. So really interested to get your thoughts on, on where we are and, and obviously learn a bit more about your um, <clears throat> Your, your company so um should we get cracking into the slides and you just give us a quick sort of five ten minute um overview of of, of what you do yeah happy to and, and good morning everyone um so i run the the shredded european real estate investment trust which is a vehicle that's listed here in london on the main sort of stock exchange and also has a second has a secondary listing in johannesburg we set this up at uh, the end of 2015 basically to give investors an opportunity to obtain income out of a sort of diversified commercial real estate portfolio in continental Europe. And it, it does nothing in the UK. So it's purely focused on buying sort of traditional um, bricks and mortar assets, both in terms of office, retail, industrial, we've got a data center in, in there as well. And you'll see that a bit later when I talk through the portfolio. Um, it's about 250 million in size, so still relatively small, uh, but but we've actually done exactly what we said we would do in terms of focused on um, winning cities or growth cities. And, and by, by means of winning cities, it's those cities that would grow faster from a GDP, a population or an employment um, perspective. And then at the micro level, we're using our teams on the ground to identify sub-markets that will benefit from transport infrastructure changes or whether there's competing demands for uses, su supply constraints, and I think fundamentally, um, really looking at assets that are leased off affordable and sustainable rents, and, and you'll, you'll get a flavour for that for that in a minute. So we've built out um, and deployed the capital in fourteen investments. We, we've sold a couple of investments over the last couple of years. We sold out of some retail in France, and we repositioned that into some industrial uh, in the Netherlands and and France as well. If you go to the next slide, thanks, Richard. So these are the assets that we've invested in, and, and obviously wouldn't be a real estate. Um, presentation without showing you some photos so um, just to give you a bit of a sense for, for for some of the assets and the themes that we've invested for and I won't go through every every investment but um, take the the asset in St. Clou which is the the bottom um, sort of three in from 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 the left it's an office building um, there's going to be a train station come outside this building in 2030 um, it, it, it's an asset that provides exceptional views over the river towards Paris as well. Um, it's in a, in a very um, sort of highly accessible area and it's leased off rents of around 200 and sort of 10 euros a metre. Prime rents in that area around 450, prime rents in, in central Paris are sort of 900 to 950. So we're starting to see some sort of back office um, sort of being, being located in this area. And again, when we get the, 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 the train station outside the building, we're going to see some pretty strong rental growth on the back of that. Similar in Hamburg. Um, so the asset next to this um, is in an area called City Sud. It's one stop from the city centre. Again, we're off rents here of around 13 euros per square metre per month. Prime rents in, in Hamburg uh, around 33 um, so again, being a huge discount to where Prime is, this is a building that's fully leased. We had five vacant office floors at the start of the pandemic. We leased every one of those floors during the pandemic. Again, we had occupiers that were wanting um, accessible buildings and affordable buildings, and, and this certainly um, ticked, ticked that, both those, those boxes. And then on the retail side, we've actually had some really strong performing retail. Top left is a, a DIY unit that we've got in, in, uh, in Berlin, sits on four hectares of land. So the way we look at this is, is not just about the income today, but what can we do with that land in the longer term? And there's some really exciting prop options that we have here in terms of building some medium density residential or some offices here um, with that four hectares. Um, we're leased to the leading DIY specialist in Hallback. They've performed exceptionally well during the pandemic with everyone being at home and investing domestically. We've seen that their sales um, um, sort of improve massively. So really strong covenant and the income side of that will continue to be a very key part of the of the trust. But we have that that angle for for alternate use down down the track. 
And then some of the logistics that we have. Um, so in, again, in some, some really strong industrial locations, both in the Netherlands and, and in France, they're typically focused on slightly smaller logistics assets, but again, um, covered by sort of strong covenants. And we've typically invested these uh, between yields of, of early fives and, and upper sixes in terms of net initial yields. So again, where we've, we've actually seen debt being being highly accretive to those sort of sort of yields that we've we've acquired off. The most recent acquisition we did was actually in Cannes. We bought a car showroom, bought the best asset um, on a in agglomeration of 22 car showrooms. Um, it's the largest frontage, the biggest site. We're sitting next to Lamborghini and, and Ferrari. Again, the alternate use on this is really exciting. We've got medium density residential behind us. Um, so although it may be a car showroom today or in the foreseeable future, we're looking at this in terms of alternate use. It is zoned for residential, so there's angles there that we, we can work um, to try and create, create value going forward. Moving to the next slide, just a little bit in terms of allocations. We've, we, we set our stall out to be diversified, and, and that's something that we'll continue to, to, to be. Um, so we're diversified in terms of sector, so roughly a third in offices, we're moving the industrial exposure to roughly a third as well. And the retail will continue to be somewhere around 20% and mainly focused in terms of grocery and or DIY related retail. We've got a little bit of a cash um, where we, we can invest and we're looking at new investment opportunities with, with that, with that um, cash that we have. That gives us a capacity to, to invest about 50 million, including raising some debt. Um, and that's how we'll be looking to, to sort of broaden out and further diversify the portfolio through investing um, that, that capital. And again, sort of focusing on those jurisdictions where we have the strongest teams on the ground. So really, that's France, Germany and the Netherlands. Um, and, and obviously having that sort of multi-sector expertise within Schroders is a very key part of how we're going to be driving returns going forward. So overall, um, really strong um, occupancy levels, we've got about 90, 96% occupied. We've had really strong rent collection during the pandemic. We're at 100%, other than that we have a uh, some exposure in a shopping centre in Seville, which we've written that, it, that position to, to zero. Um, and it's got non-recourse debt on that. So um, it, it doesn't have any impact on the, on the NAV. We're looking at trying to sell that asset at the moment. But the rest of the portfolio has been able to achieve 100% rent collection. And we're really, really positive in terms of how we've invested in some of the cities that we, we have exposure to. Moving to the, to the next slide. Thanks, Richard. Just to sort of give you a, an indication of, of how we create value as an as a investment manager and as a specialist, what we did here was we had an office building that was in, uh, in Paris in, a, in an area called boulogne billancourt It was a building that was 20 years old. We bought this um, in 2016. We had about five years left on the lease. It was a single tenanted building. It was in a very strong mixed use area. So not just an office location, but had all that, all, that alternate use for, or competing demands for uses. We were leased off rents of low 300 euros a meter. The tenant here was a, a company called Alton. They wanted to stay provided we were able to refurbish the building. So we did a, an extensive refurbishment. We invested um, about 30 million into the asset. So it was an asset that was originally worth 40 million. We invested 30. And at the same time, we, we agreed a forward funding sale with an institutional investor at around 100 million. So we were able to crystallize about 28 million of pre-tax profit. And a really good example of how, as asset management experts, how we can create value for our shareholders through de-risking and managing that refurbishment process. We com completed the refurbishment in June of this year. We handed over to, to the tenant and to the new buyer. And um, we're just finalizing snagging items at the moment so that was a, a fantastic way of how we could create value um, and also now that's what's given us that that capital that 50 million that i touched on about redeploying that and further diversifying the portfolio and and strengthening the income side just moving through to the next slide which is really positive slide around dividends and how we've been able to to maintain and move the dividend back to the pre-pandemic level early part of the of covid a lot of investors, obviously, we weren't sure how the portfolio would hold up with, with the risk around COVID. We didn't know how values were, were going to perform, how our occupiers were going to, to sort of pay their rents and what sort of state they were in. So initially, we, we cut the dividend by, by 50%. We also had to de-risk the asset management play in Paris that I just touched on. And then once we de-risked that, which really only took us um, sort of three months to finalize the sale and to, to secure a construction contract and secure the lease with the, new, with, the, with the sitting tenant. 
we then started to, to move the dividend back up. We saw very strong rent collection statistics and valuations holding up. And then within a year, we've been able to move the dividend back to that 1.85 euro cents per quarter. Um, and then on, on top of that, as we finished the, the refurbishment in, in Paris and did that, did that sale, with the extraordinary profit that we made out of that, we, we took the opportunity actually to, to, to give some special dividends back to, to shareholders. And that's, that's what's culminated in about 9.6 euro cents that we've given back to shareholders over the last 12 months. So really positive play. And I think a lot of investors have welcomed that return of capital. Um, and that still left us with around 50 million that I touched on before to, to redeploy and how we can further diversify and, and strengthen the income and move the dividend cover um, back to 100% because obviously um, selling the largest asset, um, we, we lost our biggest income side. Um, and, and the flip side is is obviously making the profit, but the flip side is that we were uncovered. And until we redeploy that 50 million, um, the, the cover um, will move back to 100, 100% once we, we're fully invested that, that capital. So that's sort of a bit of a bit of background as to the portfolio where, where we're focused, the strategy, um, using teams on the ground. I think that's a key part of, of Schroeder's and, and having sort of local teams in, in those countries that we've invested and having multi-sector expertise. If you look at today's share price, which is, which is pretty, um, and obviously been, been hit, hit pretty, pretty hard with, with sort of greater geopolitical and economic risks that, that we're all dealing with, based on that sort of 1.85 euro cents per share per quarter and annualising that, you're effectively getting around a sort of a 7.5, 7.6 dividend yield based on, on today's share, share price. And given the cities that we have exposure to and, and the strength of the investment management team, we think it's a pretty, pretty compelling investment case. We're, we're, we're lowly levered, so the gearing on this vehicle at the moment is around 29%. Uh, we can never go above 35%. Um, we'll continue to run this um, with a bit, a bit of headroom against that 35% as well. The balance sheet's in a very, really strong position, obviously, with that cash that we have. We've got a little bit of debt that's expiring next year. We're already in discussions with banks about, about refinancing that. Um, so that's a sort of a bit of background on the, on the balance sheet side of things as well. Um, but, but certainly the portfolio and the cities that we have exposure to and the type of assets that we have, we feel really, really comfortable about managing through the headwinds that, that we're all facing. So I might stop there, Richard, and happy to answer any yeah. questions.